Thank you, Matthew. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to everyone here with us this morning and those with us online. And to our visitors, a very special welcome. We're glad you're here. We hope you come back. And I think you'll find First Presbyterian to be a warm and welcoming church family. I would ask each one to sign the friendship pad you'll find at the end of the pew. We'd like to get to know each one of you better. I've got a few announcements to go over with you this morning, but before we get started, I'd like to give a special thank you to James e. Spicer and Al Rosette and their yard cleanup crew who came yesterday and worked on the grounds of our yard, and I'm sure that you saw when coming in how nice everything looks, so thank you, James and Al and the crew. Today's the day, trunk or treat. Four o'clock, we're gonna have trunk, candy, food, games, and more. And all this is thanks to the organizational skills of Paige Corbin. Thank you, Paige. And Paige asks that all volunteers, whether you've got a trunk or you're working outside or whatever, to be here no later than 3.15. On Tuesday, November the 12th at 6 o'clock, we're going to have AED training. That is automated external defibrillator training. The church now has two of these. We've got one upstairs and one downstairs. Hopefully we'll never have to use these, but if we ever do, it'd be nice to know that someone knows how to operate these. And so that train is gonna be again on the 12th at six o'clock. And if you can sign up prior to November the 10th, it would be appreciated and you can sign up in the Welcome Center. On November the 3rd, All Saints Day, First Presbyterian turns 170. On that day on our worship at 10 o'clock, we're gonna have a bagpiper and the children's choir will be performing. This will be followed by a covered dish lunch and everyone is encouraged to come and have lunch afterwards and bring their favorite side, which will be accompanied by chicken. By now, each of you should have received your pledge cards in the mail. Stewardship Sunday is November the 17th, and we would ask each of you to please bring in your pledge card on this day, and if you can't make it on that day, please return them in the mail. I would ask each of you to prayerfully consider what you can do to continue the support and support the ministry of our church. Wednesday nights have turned into a special event. They're family nights, and from 5.30 to 6.15, Pastor Noe leads us in Bible study. And from 6.15 to 7, we have a wonderful meal. I can tell you that uh, these nights are both educational, filled with a lot of fellowship, and a wonderful meal. And since uh, he just walked in, a thanks to Bill Royal for last Wednesday night's chili. It was uh, truly special chili, and I can assure you that there was no chili that went uneaten. Let's begin our worship service. Our call to worship this morning comes from Psalm 46, verses 1 through 4. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way. Though its waters roar and foam, and the mountains quake, quake with the surging, there is a river whose streams that glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. Amen. Please rise for our opening hymn, number 275, A Mighty Fortress is Our God.
Please be seated. I called a confession this morning. The grace of God overflows for us through Christ Jesus who came to save us. Trusting in God's grace, let us confess our sins. Loving God, help us to rejoice the legacy, the Reformation, to be a church that embraces our role in the public sphere alongside Christians of other traditions and people of other faiths. In our life together, make us an ever closer likeness of your beloved community and outside the walls of our community of faith, enable each, each to pursue a life not of completion, but one that looks to the future with confidence that your Holy Spirit will bring all things to their proper end. Until then, may we be reformed and always reforming, not as a principle in and of itself, but according to your word, Jesus Christ, our Lord, in whose name we pray, amen. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Good morning. Well, Rory said they look like macaroons, but Campbell said they look like hot dogs. What do you think they look like? Ice cream sandwiches. Okay. Good morning, guys. They're, it's just a little design. Do you have a piggy bank at home? You do? I have four. Four piggy banks. Are they all full? Almost. Almost. My goodness. You have a pig piggy bank? A giraffe. Do you guys have a piggy bank? You don't have one? Do you have one? Do you have a piggy bank? You do? Cool. What do you do with your piggy bank? You put money in it. You put money into it. Most people, when they come home at night, if they use cash throughout the day, they'll pull all the money out of their pockets and they'll put it into their piggy bank to save it for something that they want to buy later, right? Is that what you do with your piggy bank? Well, it's kind of like treasure, isn't it? Do you know that the Bible talks about treasure? Mm -hmm. What do you think the Bible might say about treasure? That it's God. That it's God, that God is our treasure. That's a pretty good, pretty good thing. That Jesus is our treasure. What do you think it, the Bible says about treasure? Anybody? The Bible says that we are not supposed to store up our treasure on earth, but to get heavenly treasure. What do you think heavenly treasure may be? God. God. Going to heaven, eternal life, Jesus. That's right. So if we're not supposed to store up our treasure on earth, what are we supposed to do with our treasure if we have it? Give it to other people. Give it to people in need, donate it. That's a good point. Now, it is important to save up a little bit because in case of emergencies, you need some money, right? Yes. But God wants us to be good stewards of what he gives us because without God, we're nothing. So when he gives us money or talents or anything, he wants us to be good stewards of that and to give it away. So ha what are some ways that you can give your talents away? Oh, not really. Just helping other people. Helping other people. What do you think? If you're a good singer, how could you help other people with your singing? Help them try to practice. 
help them practice. You could sing for people to cheer them up. What if one of your talents is being a good friend? You could share that, right? You could, you could teach your friend to be a good friend. You could teach your friend to be a good friend. That's right. So we're supposed to find earthly treasures. That means that God wants us to be more and more like Jesus every day so that we have treasures in heaven and not just here on earth. That, may, that reminds me, I forgot to ask Mr. Um, Charles to announce it today. In your pew, there are white envelopes for our PPK offering, which will be taken up today. These offerings will go to um, sponsor children for scholarships for PPK, Protestant Preschool and Kindergarten. So if you feel so led, please um, put money in the envelopes and drop those in the offering plate today. Will you guys pray with me? Dear Lord, are y'all going to pray with me? Yeah. Okay. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the monies and talents that you have given us. Help us to be good stewards of everything that you've given us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Paige. Our Hebrew Bible reading this morning comes from Isaiah 43, verses 16 through 21. This is what the Lord says. God, who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters, who drew out the chariots and horses, the army and reinforcements together, and they lay there, never to rise again, extinguished, snuffed out like a wick. Forget the former things, do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. The wild animals honor me, the jackals and the owls, because I provide water in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland to give drink to my people, my chosen, the people I formed for myself, that they may proclaim my praise. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
That was just beautiful. Thank you, choir, Matthew. I was feeling like, wow, that's a really hard act to follow. But with God's help, we will continue. But maybe it's better to pray. Let, please, let us pray together. Oh, Lord, we thank you for the gift of music. That we can be together to worship you. And oh Lord, oh Lord, this song, this is my story, Blessed Assurance. I learned to sing in Spanish, and now I'm singing in English. But all of us in our stories, from our parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, and here we are on this Reformation Sunday. 507 years later, when the Reformation began, here we are singing your goodness. This is our story, that you have come to this earth because you love us and you are sending us so that we can share your love with everyone. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our heart be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Glad to be here in worship. I hope you are having a good Sunday. It's a little bit rainy this morning, but I think... The weather is going to get a little bit dry, and by the afternoon at 4 o'clock, it's going to be perfect, right, uh, Paige? So we can have this wonderful Trunk or Treat community event. And if it's going to be similar to last year, we're going to have 300 to 400 families from the community. And we have lots of candy, lots of hot dogs, and lots of trunks. And thank you so much for all your uh, volunteer time. And I, I'm, they, they hired me again to be the music guy, DJ is it Chimichanga or Chimichurri? One of those. DJ Chimichanga will be helping with music for you. So all of us can have a great, great time together. So let me start this message. Uh, I was going to tell you my story with money, but I think it's more fun to tell you this other story. About, it's, a, it's a message about celebrate spiritual treasures. So here we go. And this story is actually, if you Google this story, there are different versions, so this is my version of this story. Some years ago, a guy, of course it has to be a guy, asked his family and his wife to be buried with his Harley Davidson motorcycle in the cemetery. So I Googled this morning and said, how much is a Harley Davidson motorcycle now? $44,000. That's probably the cheaper one. It might be more expensive ones. But So this person said, to his wife before he died, he said, when you bury me, put me in my Harley Davidson motorcycle and take me to the cemetery with my Harley Davidson and bury me there. His wife was just kind of saying, yes, dear, yes, dear, whatever you say, dear. So the, the guy died and the family and the wife honored this person and they did put his Harley Davidson motorcycle with him in the cemetery. I just feel sorry for that pastor. I wonder how that sermon went in the funeral service. But keep listening to the story. So they did the service. They all say how wonderful this guy was and how he loved motorcycles and he loved people and wonderful guy. His wife was just listening in the service. It's sad. Maybe not so sad. Uh, <laughs> Cemetery, funeral was over. The very next day, his wife hurries and runs and said, calls somebody and said, uh, so and so, I need your help. I said, I'm going to go to the cemetery and come bring that Harley Davidson. I'm going to sell it and have a great time. And that's what she did. The wife went, got that beautiful Harley Davidson out of the husband. She sold it. And she said, here's a piña colada. I'm, I'm making up a little bit of that. Here's, here's a piña colada. Life is good. Let's celebrate the passing of my husband. Stupid guy with the Harley Davidson and so forth. That's just my version of the story. If you Google, there are a lot of stories like that. I don't know if it's so true, but they may be part true about the Harley Davidson guy who wanted to be buried with his, with his Harley Davidson motorcycle. What about you and me? Would you like to be buried with your car, your Harley Davidson if you have a motorcycle? Or would you like to be buried with your beautiful house? Can you put your beautiful house in a cemetery with you? 
It's kind of silly, isn't it? But there are people who want to be buried with the Harley Davidson motorcycle. What is your philosophy? What is your understanding of money? And I have to admit that I don't like preaching about money every Sunday, but this is that stewardship season, part one sermon, so you'll hear it this time, and then you'll hear it on November 17, in the stewardship Sunday, or consecration Sunday. Those are the two times a year that I preach about money, so it's not too bad, right? Can you tolerate a sermon about money twice a year? Yeah? Okay. So, here it goes. What does Jesus teach us about money and stewardship? This week, the finance committee has sent a beautiful letter. If you haven't received, uh, you probably got it on, it was sent on Wednesday, I believe. So you probably got it on Friday or Saturday. If you didn't get it, you might get it yet. You might get it on Monday or Tuesday. It has a letter beautifully written by the chair of finance committee, Tim Haithcock, and the finance committee members. And it's asking all of us, including the pastor, I got the letter, to prayerfully consider about our pledge, our giving for the budget of 2025 stewardship year. But you know what? I am not worried about the budget of 2025. You know why? Because in my two and a half years in this church, I know how generous, how given, how missional, how wonderful hearts you have. In fact, I don't think any of you would like to be buried with your Harley Davidson in the cemetery. And if you do, I would love to have a conversation with you. <laughs> Not to judge you, I just want to understand that. It's just an interesting story. Uh, but the point is, when we go, when we do funeral services, when we in fact, I just did one recently for our brother, Gilbert Brown, and I did not see any U-Haul trucks with the cars going from Seymour Funeral Home to the cemetery. Have you ever seen U-Haul trucks going to the cemetery? No, I haven't. Have you seen it? But why do we live like we can take a U-Haul truck Behind, behind our hairs, behind our casket. Why do we live like that? Why do we so obsessed? And I'm, I'm here with you. We, I'm saying you and I together. Why, why do we get obsessed with money sometimes? And the reading for today has to wrestle with that. And let us read together in that context of the Harley Davidson motorcycle guy. The word of the Lord from Luke chapter 12, verse 22. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, about your body, what you will wear, for life is more than food and the body more than clothes. Consider the ravens, they do not sow or reap, they have no storeroom or barn, yet God feeds them. And how much more valuable you are than birds. Who of you by worrying can add a single hour to your life? Since you cannot do this very little thing, why do you worry about the rest? Consider the wild, the wild flowers grow. They do not labor or spin. Did I tell you not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these? If that's how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, how much more will he clothe you? Ye of little faith, as King James Version would say. And do not set your heart on what you will eat or drink. Do not worry about it. For the pagan world runs after all such things, and your father knows that you need them. But seek his kingdom, 
and these things will be given to you as well. Do not be afraid, little flock, for your father has been pleased, has been pleased to give you the kingdom. And this is the hard word, verse 33. Sell your possessions and give to the poor. That, that's very hard. Provide forces for yourselves that will not wear out. A treasure in heaven that will never fail. Where no thief comes near, no moth destroys. For your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In order to understand this reading, and Paige has preached a sermon last Sunday, a wonderful sermon, using the Matthew passage in the Sermon on the Mount. This is the Luke version of the Sermon on the Mount. And I'm focusing more on the stewardship and the money part. But in order to understand Jesus saying what we just read, we actually have to go back to the story before this, this reading. Luke chapter 12, 13 to 21. And you probably remember, because I'm going to read it to you, but it's the parable of the rich fool. The parable of the rich fool. In the parable, two brothers come and say, Jesus, tell my brother to give me my inheritance. And life is not fair. They're not being fair with me. And Jesus tells this brother, watch out. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in an abundance of possession. And then the parable can be summarized like this. A man was, had a lot of money, a, halo, a lot of harvest. And the man said, this time I want to build a bigger storage, a bigger place to put all my things, my possessions. And then I'll store it some more and some more. And then in the parable, God comes and said, you foolish person, this very night your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for you? So our brother and preacher, Martin Luther King, has preached a sermon on this parable that to me is very, very powerful sermon. His sermon in the 60s was called, Why did Jesus call the rich man foolish? Why did Jesus call the rich man foolish? And he gives three reasons. Because the means became more important than the end. This rich man was preoccupied, preoccupied with riches that he forgot the eternal purpose of his life. Because the rich man failed to recognize his dependence on others. In the parable, there's no reference to the rich man's wife, children, or family members. Eleven times he says, I will do this, I will do that, and even talks in third person. You have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy, eat, drink, and be merry. It's all about himself. And the third reason, because he failed to recognize his dependence on God. Friends, the parable of the rich fool invites us to ask very, very honestly these questions. Is the purpose of human beings to acquire wealth for its own sake? Or is it a means by which God can guide us to be a blessing to others? I know this church, you have been a blessing to others in this community. And you continue to amaze me with your generosity. So I think I'm very grateful. I'm blessed that we can be that generous congregation. Jesus calls the rich person foolish, not because of his wealth, but because his, this person has become so focused on himself that his riches, focused on himself and his riches, that he has forgotten God, his family, and his community. This will be, this rich person would have been buried with his Harley Davidson, with his U-Haul truck, and his house all together. That is how foolish this person was. 
So when we accumulate things, when we have storages in America, it always surprises me that we're building more storage units everywhere. And we, see, we, we seem to store things, things that we don't need. We don't have space in our houses, in our closets, our garage. What do we do? We put it in the storage units. But thanks be to God, in this church, we have a wonderful thing called the mission yard sale in the fall and the giving, a clothing giveaway in the spring. I think it's a wonderful th way to share the blessings with others and not put in storage units. But why do we live like we can take our U-Haul truck behind our hearse? Why is that? How can we follow Jesus' teachings with our goods and money? And how can we share our goods and wealth with others in a sustainable way? That is the stewardship season opportunity for us to think about, to live generously, and not only to give about money, like uh, Paige was saying, but it's about giving our gifts, our talents, and you as a congregation do a wonderful job of sharing your talents in the committees, in choir, and ministries, groups, volunteer, and I'm just so happy that we can, we can do that. And the reading of Luke chapter 12 to 22 can be summarized by the brother Bob Marley when he says, I need to practice my whistling, but don't worry, be happy. Here's a little song I wrote. You might want to sing and note for note. Don't worry, be happy. Don't worry about your money. Don't worry about your bank account. Don't worry about your investments. Don't worry about your Harley Davidson. Sorry, I'm picking on the Harley Davidson guy. If you have a Harley Davidson, I'm sorry. Uh, don't worry about uh, your car. Don't worry about your bills. I'm just preaching to myself. Sometimes I get worried about paying my bills. Because the harder I work, the, hard, the more bills I seem to be paying every month. But don't worry, Noe about bills, don't worry about the money. Jesus, like one of my friends says, Jesus Christ and God is my retirement benefits. Jesus is my retirement benefit. But it doesn't mean that we don't have to be good stewards. I think it's a balance of faith, don't worry about life, be happy but also being good stewards. Everything that God gives us is God's. We are only stewards, instruments. That's why both in Matthew and Luke, Jesus says these words. Do not store up for yourself treasures on earth, where moth and mildew destroys, where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor mildew destroys, and where thieves do not break in or steal. For your treasure is, there your heart will be also. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is asking us a final question. Where is a heart, really? When it comes to money, where is our heart? Is it in the refrigerator, our bank account, our investments, our house, our motorcycle, our cars? Those are wonderful things. But are, this, are those means by which we can be a blessing to others? Where is our heart? Last Friday, I went to a wonderful breakfast at Lane Tree, a golf, tree, uh, golf uh, place where the Habitat for Humanity has organized an annual breakfast, a fundraising breakfast, but also to celebrate with people who are involved in Habitat, building houses in the community. And in the last 20 years, they have built 100 houses in Wayne County, which is an amazing accomplishment. And this church, you have been part of it. Many of you have been part of Habitat 
and you have been involved, and you're still involved. And we continue to partner with Habitat and so many other organizations as we continue to be a blessing for the community. Matthew Whittle, as he was giving a, a speech, he quoted a guy got, that got my attention. I went after the meeting and said, Could, can I share with you this, this quote? And I want to share it with you. It's actually in your sermon insert, if you want to take it with you. It comes from Clarence Jordan, who was the founder of Koinonia Farm in Georgia. And this is what Clarence Jordan says about money and stewardship. What the poor needs is not charity, but capital. Not case workers, but co-workers. And what the rich need is a wise, honorable, and just way of divesting themselves of their overabundance. For where your treasure is, that your heart will be also. Let us then celebrate our spiritual treasures now and forever. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Please join me in a prayer. Loving God, reform our hearts so that we can focus on spiritual treasures instead of worshiping money or power. Help us to keep following your teachings about what is really important in life. In this stewardship season, keep us inspiring us to be generous and to continue becoming a community missional church that cares for the least of this in Goldsboro or wherever you send us. We pray for our brothers and sisters in our weekly prayer list. Although there are so many who are struggling with health, or grieving the passing of friends, or perhaps we are just anxious about life in general, with what's happening in our world, in our country, or in our own lives. Help us to not be worried, but to be happy in you and your help. We pray for our country. Guide us, O oh Lord, in these days for all of us to exercise our civic duty of voting in a responsible, in a caring, and loving way. And help us. God, we know that in your word, you remind us that kings, queens, presidents come and go. But you, O oh God, are our Lord and Savior that reigns forever. Help us to put you in our hearts more than anything else. And give us comfort and hope that you are weaving in your providence a beautiful world in spite of what we see sometimes. And now we pray the way you have taught us how to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth sit in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Will the ushers please come forward to collect our tithes and offerings? pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning in praise and thanks. 
knowing all we have comes from you. Please accept these offerings to further your kingdom, bring hope to the needy, and peace to us all. Guide us in the direction that you would have us go. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. This morning is number 716. God who's giving knows no ending. So friends, thank you for being in worship, and thank you, choir, and Matthew, for leading us in music, and thank you for being here in worship. Today is a wonderful Sunday. Just a reminder to the officers, we'll have lunch and have uh, our training. We try to keep it short because uh, we're coming back at what time? Three? That's right. So we have to, we have to keep my training short so I can have, go home, take a nap, and come back. Okay. Uh, so I hope you can join us, and if you cannot come back at 4 o'clock, invite your friends or tell your friends or bring, uh, tell your family. Uh, repost again, if you haven't repost the family, the Trunk or Treat event this, for this afternoon. So may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. Amen. <laughs>